In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you some awesome features and some tips and tricks I recommend everybody to also be aware of if you just recently picked up the Chromecast Google TV. What's going on everyone? Hope everybody's doing well. So yeah, I recently picked this gizmo up and so far I am very impressed. So for anybody who owns a Chromecast that is not 4K and you're debating if you should upgrade to the Chromecast TV, go ahead and do so because this nifty device is definitely worth its asking price. Based from everything that I've seen so far, I see a lot of value out of this device compared to an Apple TV or even a Fire Stick TV by Amazon or other streaming sticks that plug in via HDMI to your television. But in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the cool features and shortcuts that you could do with this little nifty device. Let's get started starting off with the remote. So the layout to this controller is really simple, very minimum. It's available in three different color choices. The one you see here is just clearly white. And what I like about it, it's that everything is really simple to use. This top part will allow you to basically navigate the menu. The center wheel is just how you select. Below that, you have the back arrow. You have the virtual voice assistant button right here, which when you hold, that LED goes on. When you see that LED, the built-in microphone in the controller, means that it's listening. Below that, you have, you have the home button, which will take you back to the home menu. And a cool little trick about that home menu button, whatever application you're using, if you press and hold it, it'll give you quick access to the little notification side menu. So from here, if you wanna take your display to ambient mode, you can just tap on it, and it'll start playing those weird wallpapers. And when ambient mode is enabled, you can actually use the right or left side click wheel to select two different images in case you selected personal photos you may have already on your device. And then of course, next to that, you have your mute button, as well as the shortcut for YouTube and Netflix. Then only the YouTube button can be configured with another substitute YouTube application like YouTube TV, YouTube Music. You can do this by holding down the YouTube button. So if you have a personal preference, you wanna switch them, swap it with, you can. And depending on the TV, this arrow with a little box around it. If you find yourself in a different auxiliary input and you wanna quickly go back to the Chromecast, just tap this, will automatically set you back to the Chromecast menu. And then right next to that one, of course, you have the general power on and off button. Oh, and since we're covering all the buttons, volume rockers are right here on the side. Now the home menu of this Chromecast TV, it's really cool, but there's some additional settings I recommend others to at least be aware of. If you're not a big fan of this clutter display, you just wanna see the apps that you have installed, and that's it. There's a simple way you could clear this menu. If we quickly just hop into our settings, go into here, and go ahead and enabled apps only mode. With this enabled, now if we hop back into our main menu, the only apps that we get recommended are the apps that we have already installed, as well as some of those applications, popular titles. So if you're looking for a simple, minimum menu, that's how you could get this clean layout. And then by hovering over an application, if you actually hold down the select wheel for a couple of seconds, you could rearrange them however you like. Now, the cool thing with this Chromecast TV is that you could add additional profiles. So if you live in a household with multiple users, you could allow them to add their profile right here. Process is exactly the same like how I walk you through when you first paired your device. Now, you may have noticed that this Chrome controller is able to control the volume as well as power on and off my television. And depending on your TV, you could also control your television and the Chromecast with your standard television remote. And in case your device isn't doing that, you have to go ahead and enable CEC, which is really easy to do. Simply just hop into your settings section right here, go here, and in here, just make sure you have enabled HDMI, CEC. Now, no matter the controller you're using, now since this is a Chromecast, if you have your television turned off and you're watching a video on an app that supports the Chromecast, by tapping this little square, you can still select your television and notice that will automatically turn on your TV and cast everything to the television without you having to manually get up and turn on the television nor search for your remote. Now, another thing I would recommend enabling is match content. By simply going into here, go in here, just make sure to enable this right here to give you the best color accuracy that your TV can deliver as possible. Now, if your television does support 4K, I recommend going in here, going in here, and make sure you change it to 4K. Now, whatever platform you're on, if the video supports 4K, it will automatically be set to default to 4K. Now, 
Enabling game mode will also may also benefit you because this will eliminate any latency delay when watching something with a fast refresh rate. So I like to leave this personally on. Now, if you don't like the remote constantly making the selection sound, you could easily go ahead and disable this by simply going into here, going in here and system sound, go ahead and disable. And now the remote doesn't make that feedback noise. Obviously, this is a personal preference, but if you don't like that noise, that's how you could disable that. Another thing that's worth mentioning in the settings is the energy saving mode. Now, by default, if you leave your TV on pause, your television will go off depending on the time that's already selected and we'll switch to the ambient wallpaper. If you like to extend this time, just simply go in here, go in there and go ahead and select the time that you're comfortable. So now whenever you pause a movie and it takes you like 30 minutes to get back, you don't have to relaunch the application. It will immediately resume back. Now, in case you have this Chromecast plugged into an older TV, a feature that I recommend others to also be aware of is enabling high contrast. This will just technically enhance the text by giving it a, a larger border around the text. So to quickly enable this, in case you have a hard time seeing the text, just go ahead and hop into your settings, go into accessibility, and enabled high contrast. And now the text and such, you may have noticed, it's a lot more broader and easier to read. Now in the ambient mode, here I recommend to personalize your device as much as possible. Ambient mode is basically this wallpaper, the screensaver, and you can actually adjust certain things. If you want it to show the time, the weather, and all additional stuff, this is where you can find that and enabled or disable some of that. If you want to give your device a cleaner layout. If you want to check the battery stats of the controller, you can simply just go into here, go in here, and right there is where you can check that. But if the Chromecast does notice that your device is low on batteries, I'm sure it'll send you a notification on the screen. So you don't really have to check on this constantly unless you notice that your remote isn't responding. If that's the case, this is where you could actually manually check the battery life stats. Oh, and here you can also change the title of your remote if you want to give your controller a different name for some reason. Now, if you have like a external soundbar or other receivers and you want to pair this controller to it, by simply going in here, going into the controller settings, right here is where you can actually go ahead and pair those additional devices. But in here, there's additional settings that you can actually change and adjust. One of which, if you have a receiver or something, you can actually change the input button to be something else. So that receiver could also switch to different auxiliary ports by being controlled by just this simple button on this remote. You could also change the power button to turn off your soundbar instead of your television, or you could select CEC to power on or off all your devices at once. You may also change the volume controls in here as well. So depending on your setup, this is where you can actually allow this controller to control all those other devices and you can actually modify it to make your life a little bit easier. Another thing I recommend to also adjust to really personalize your device, if you go all the way down to the very bottom right here, you can actually enable the certain apps that you want to see more that you are currently subscribed to, or you could disable them. The benefits of enabling the ones that you are subscribed to, like Netflix is a fine example. Whenever there's like a new series or a new movie that got added and it's really trendy, you will see it right there on the menu, just showing you something that is recommended that you may end up liking. Now, uninstall bloatware is another thing I recommend everybody to at least do. By default, there's a couple already pre-installed applications. If you quickly just go into your settings, go into here, go in here, and right here, you can see the applications that the Chromecast already came installed with, or the applications you installed, but you wanna uninstall them. So Sling TV, for example, it's a service that I'm personally not subscribed to. So I recommend uninstalling some of these apps that you just don't find yourself using to free up some space and also clean up your main menu. Now, if you're unsure what you could do with the Google Voice Assistant built into the television, you could just simply ask it, what can you do? And it will literally play this cool little YouTube video showing you all the things they could do. Basically, it could do pretty much all the necessity stuff that you're Google Mini or other Google virtual voice assistants you may already have, but we'll actually show you all that information on your display. But besides that, that is pretty much all the unique things that this device can do. So it definitely does a lot more than your standard Chromecast. And it's almost on par compared to what the Apple TV can do, all inside a much more smaller device. And the fact that it has full 4K support 
yeah this thing is absolutely amazing for its asking price well there we have it folks hope you enjoy in case you're debating about picking up this device over an apple tv as an example i go ahead and review the apple tv right here but make sure to stay tuned as soon as i have some downtime i'm gonna go ahead and make a comparison between these two devices anyways and then this video over here that's just a video that youtube is recommending specifically for you feel free to watch either or again thanks so much for watching take care and i'll catch you all in the next one see ya